Have you ever had that one house guest who just refuses to leave? I mean, you've cleaned up the dishes, you've stopped refilling their drinks, you're now on your fourth time of telling them how early you have to get up in the next morning, and they still aren't getting the hint. But what if they invited themselves over? The Netflix original film The Occupant takes a look at a guest who just might be obsessive. Javier is a once successful ad exec who is now down on his luck and seriously discontent with his life. He finally makes the decision to move his family out of the home because they can't afford it. And through that, he begins to tumble down a path of obsession. This is a slow burn, but it's not boring. It's deliberate and it's building. And once ideas are put into motion, I began to squirm in my seat because of the tone of the film. It just got more and more dark and disturbing. This is a really good character study on desire, greed, perception, and success. And we see a gradual unraveling of morals because the obsession begins to take hold, and that leads to more actions. This is certainly thrilling to watch, but it's patient too. I love that they tie in the idea of what success is throughout the movie. And then don't discount that opening scene. It's way more poignant than you may think when you first see it. The acting is pretty good in this, especially from the lead character played by Javier Gutierrez. He sells the character really well, and he just dives into it in a way that becomes real, and his, his demeanor, his perception, his emotion, his obsession even, really begins to seethe from him, and it becomes very believable. Now, there is a really gross and disturbing subplot that goes on in this, and I think the only reason it's in there is because it then illustrates what Javier is willing to do. Now, personally, I could have done without that part because we already get to see what he's willing to do and how far he's willing to take things. But they included this anyway, and, you know, it takes up some time, so it could have been cut out, shortened it even more, which may, would have made this a faster watch, which it didn't need to be. But then it also would have reduced some of the gross factor that I think it really could have done without. And like I said, it is a quick watch. It's under two hours, and it moves along really well. It's not too fast, but it's also not too slow. I mean, it just moves at a very good pace, and it's a lot of fun to watch, despite the disturbing tone. A lot of what happens in this is pretty obvious, and we can see the progression and how things are gonna go, and so we can guess the next steps. But really, the point of this is not to surprise us with some twist, but it's more to disturb us by the actions and the behaviors that we're seeing. Now, there are a few themes in this that could disturb you, depending on your background. There is addiction, there is abuse, there is violence, and luckily not all of those are really do dived into a lot or in depth, but they are present. I'm not totally sure I buy the ending of this. It just seems a little too convenient. I mean, I get the setup and I like the setup and it makes sense, but then the rest of it just seems a little bit too implausible. But on the other hand, it does fit the tone about a person obsessed with a thought, chasing their desire despite morals, and pursuing the dream that is seemingly perfect, but in reality is still flawed. Maybe the ending will be the thing that disappoints you. I was able to overlook the convenience in light of the entire narrative, which admittedly also has a lot of convenience to it. But it was still uncomfortable, tense, and fun to watch. I really think the acting and the theme and just the underlying obsession, that's really the reason to watch. I mean, yes, it is a lot of convenience thrown in there. And if you were to really pick it apart and look at it and not pay attention so much to the theme or the tone of the film, but just look at the actions, then it would be probably a very frustrating film because it's just like, well, gosh, you have this domino here and this domino here. And when you put this one in, of course, they're all going to fall over. Well, duh. And I'm not sure that this character would make that decision in real life. Well, they may not. But in the course of what you're actually looking at in the story and in the film, then it does make sense, even if it is convenient. Because you, you see this person who is just obsessed with what they're doing and obsessed with their thought and they're chasing after it. And even though it's an abstract thought too, that's the other thing, that it's not necessarily this concrete thing, even though he then makes it concrete. He's chasing it. He wants it to become reality. And that's how I love the ending because of how it actually ends up. As implausible as it is, and especially when you think about all the steps that it takes to get to that ending, it's totally implausible. I, you wouldn't even, th like I would see that and go, mm, no, never in reality would that happen. But in the course of this narrative, totally makes sense. There's no sex or nudity. There is a lot of profanity and some violence. I give the occupant four out of five couches. So how do you define success? 
Ooh, that's a big question, right? Well, if you want to, answer that in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for catching with me.